Lancaster, Danby, uh, Littleton, New Hampshire, and road closed there. So we did have our share of severe thunderstorms this afternoon. Most of that activity has died down. As a matter of fact, George went outside a little bit early. Now, he wouldn't tell me where this picture was taken from, but this is the Champlain rainbow that a lot of us saw later on tonight. So things really turned nice for at least most of us. However, we're going to see some action on Storm Tracker 5000. The action that we have that's most intense right now is over the northern portions of the region. Some thunderstorm activity there, but overall things are, have diminished greatly. What's in store for tomorrow? We'll let you know in just a few minutes. Stephanie? Thanks, Give. Tragedy strikes during an outdoor circus in Lancaster. This Vermont father and his eight year old daughter both died when witnesses say strong winds picked up a circus tent and then collapsed it atop roughly 100 people. 32 of those people were injured, some of them seriously. Mike Cronin from our sister station, WMUR, picks up the story there. The state fire marshal says the two victims, a father and daughter, died of blunt force trauma in Monday night's tent collapse. They were identified as 41-year-old Robert Young and 8-year-old Annabelle Young, both of Concord, Vermont. State officials say the National Weather Service is calling the weather pattern that coincided with the collapse a microburst. They say it has estimated wind gusts of 75 miles per hour, possibly even reaching 90 miles per hour. The path was very clear when you looked at it from the air um, and how it, uh, it took down some trees on a riverbank and then spread out going across the field and ultimately uh, took down the tent. Authorities say about 100 people were inside the Walker Brothers International Circus tent when it collapsed, killing the father and daughter and injuring more than 30. It's unclear how many are still hospitalized. The state fire marshal says the circus is cooperating. That cooperation level has improved greatly, uh, and uh, we're getting good information from them as we speak. Degvin says the circus did not have a place of assembly permit, which was required. At this time, it's unknown if any charges will be brought forth. We need to look at the statute in detail uh, before I can say whether it falls into that category or not. Monday night, the National Weather Service issued a severe thunderstorm warning 23 minutes before the tent was uprooted. Well, their responsibility is for the safety of their guests. And, uh, you know, whether they knew or not that the storm was coming, uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking into that. The father and daughter killed in the tent collapse traveled from their hometown in Vermont to see the show, according to police. Tonight, the eight year old victim's mother spoke to WPTZ about how the two will be remembered. We reached out to Trisha Bellevue, who said Robert died a hero trying to save Annabelle. They will both be greatly missed. They died so young. This is a photo of the pair. Many other families from the Northeast Kingdom were at the circus when the tent fell. One woman who was there with three grandkids said the weather did not concern her at first, but she panicked when one side of the tent began to topple. I went to get off the bleachers and a pole came down and hit me down to the ground. And I managed to get out from under the pole and help this other lady out. And then everybody just started running to look for their families and their kids. Everyone was helping everyone out. Lavoie broke her leg, but her grandchildren are okay, which is all she said she cared about. Meanwhile, the principal of the Concord School, where Annabelle was a student, has set up a GoFundMe page for the victim's family. Well, Governor Peter Shumlin released a statement about what happened, saying, this is incredibly heartbreaking news as the father of two daughters I can't imagine the pain and grief that this tragedy has caused the family, friends, and loved ones of these two Vermonters. I join all Vermonters in holding my family a little closer tonight and keeping those who knew these two Vermonters in my thoughts. You can continue to follow the, the developments in this breaking story on our website where we have posted viewer pictures and witness descriptions of what it was like at the scene. You can find it all at WPTZ.com and by way of our mobile app. Dog park problems tonight. Burlington's Parks Commission looked at complaints coming from Star Farm Dog Park. Is it too crowded? Should there be new rules for pups and their pals? WPTC's Rachel Cars is on canine control tonight. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Steph. Right now, Queen City dog parks don't have any dedicated funding. This means these parks compete with other facilities for money for maintenance or amenity costs. Tonight, the city discussed some ideas they have for the park's future. 
people that have dogs and can't take them off leash when you walk them, this is the ideal spot for them. Dennis D. Simone says he comes to the Star Farm dog park six days a week. I have a basset dachshund mix. He can't come off leash at all, except for in here because he take off. The city is discussing a wide variety of changes to the park, including the possibility of limiting hours and space and even charging users. Parks and Rec Director Jesse Bridges says the Humane Society estimates between seven and 9,000 dogs call Burlington home. Only about 1,200 are licensed. Currently, there is no dedicated funding source for the provision of dog park amenities. This is something that the Off Leash Task Force addressed yep. is that dog, while we have an extremely high rate of pet ownership and a lot of dogs, our licensure surship is really low. One of the ideas is to give specific tags to use the park when owners renew their pet's license. The thought is any fees related to the park would go towards maintaining it. A few dozen residents flooded Tuesday night's Parks Commission meeting to speak out about the proposed changes. We raise the prices of houses in our neighborhood because in part due to the dog park. Um, so we really do not want to see it getting diminished in any way. We'd rather see it get bigger, get it get better. Space is incredibly important for everybody's safety. Bridges says the city is brainstorming options and looking to other formalized dog parks for ideas. They have areas that basically lay fallow for a year. Uh, that allows, it allows you to get turf restoration happening. Uh, Bridges says sectioning off parts of the park to allow the grass to grow will ultimately help with the park's maintenance. Live in the newsroom tonight, Rachel Cars, WPTZ News Channel 5. Hey, winter enthusiasts.